Hi Gok Dinna, I want to take you through a couple of quick examples relating to income tax. This is quite a popular question on the junior cert exams, so it is very important that we have a good understanding of it. And of course, for when we start, I suppose, working, that we understand how tax works. So first of all, income tax is the tax that everybody pays on the money that they earn. And that gov that money goes to the government then to run the country. So in um, Ireland, we have what we call standard rate and we also have something which we call higher rate. So again it's important to be aware that these rates are different and up until a certain cutoff point which we'll talk about again in uh, example two you will pay a certain amount of tax percentage and then when you get above that threshold you're going to pay a higher rate of tax. So we're going to start off with a simple example where we're only dealing with the standard rate. This is still important to understand how it works and how something called tax credits work and then we'll look at a more difficult example. Okay, so in this example we know that uh, Tom earns a gross pay of 28,000. So gross pay represents how much money he earns before any deductions are made. And what they want us to do in this question is work out his net income. And that basically means how much money does he have left after the deductions have been taken away. The next thing that you need to look at in your exam question is the fact that he's paying tax at a standard rate of 20% and he has tax credits of 2,200. Now tax credits are something that we like and tax credits are basically a certain amount of the tax, uh, gross tax that we think we have to pay to the government that we don't actually have to give them. So it's a good thing. So step one of this question is we are going to work out how much tax uh, we think we have to pay or Tom has to pay to the government and that's what we call gross tax. So to do that you're going to find 20% of the 28,000. So you're going to multiply your 28,000 by 20 over 100 or you can look at it the other way of multiplying it by 0 0.2. When you do that, obviously use your calculator, you're going to come up with 5,600 euro. That represents the gross tax, so how much tax we think Tom has to pay to the government. However, Tom is happy because he's got some tax credits, which means that he does not have to pay all of that tax back to the government. So we're going to then say, okay, well this is how much we think he has to pay. However, he doesn't have to pay 2,200, so we're going to subtract. And when you subtract that, we're going to get net tax of 3,400 euro. So that's how much money Tom actually has to pay to the government. We're nearly there. Last thing we have to do then is find his net income. So we're going to take his net tax and we're going to subtract that away from his gross pay. So that's going to be 28,000 minus 3,400 and therefore Tom has to uh, earns in a year his net income of 24,000 oops 600 euro. Okay guys so for this example we're going to look at something that's a little bit trickier and the reason why it's a little bit trickier is because this person earns over what we call the standard cut off point. And the standard cutoff point is basically the amount of money that somebody can earn up to paying the standard rate of tax. Any money that they earn over that uh, threshold, they have to pay a higher rate of tax, which is in and around 40%. But you will be told that in the question, the exact rate that they want you to use. So in this example, Sarah's gross pay is... Imagine it being this rectangle. So that's worth 48,000. And this rectangle then is kind of split up into two sections. Up until this point, she's paying 20% tax. So in here goes our 32,800. So then up here where she has to pay her higher rate of tax, we need to calculate how much money she's paying 40% because she doesn't pay it on the whole 48,000. She just pays it on anything over the 32,800. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to do 48,000 and we're going to subtract away 32,800. And we calculate then that her money over that threshold is going to be 15,200. 
So that, that's step one. So basically you work out how much money is uh, is being represented in the higher rate um, percentage and that in this question it's going to be 15,200. So step two then we're going to work out our tax that we need to pay on each of those. So step two is we're going to find 20% of 32,800. Nice and straightforward. And then step three is we are going to work out 40% of 15,200. So 20% of 32,800 is going to give us 6,560. And 40% of 15,200 is 6,080. Step four is I want to work out how much tax in total then before any tax credits um, etc are deducted. So we're going to work out our gross tax. We need to add together those two figures. So we're going to add together 6,560 plus 6,080 to work out how much gross tax Sarah has to uh, is paying. So when you add together those two figures, you're going to get a total of 12,640. So this is her gross tax. This is how much tax Sarah thinks she has to pay to the government. However, we've got this nice thing happening again where we're told that she's got some tax credits. Again, tax credits are a good thing because it means that we don't have to give over all that money. So we're going to take our gross tax, which we've just calculated, and we're going to subtract our tax credits away, which were 2,500. And when we subtract those away, we're going to come up with a net tax or tax payable of 10,140. So this is how much tax that Sarah has to pay to the government. We're nearly there now. The last step is going to be then to work out her net income. We take her gross income of 48,000 and we subtract away the tax that she has to pay to the government. And that's going to come to a net income of 37,860. So that is how much money Sarah is actually going to get into her bank account over a course of a year.